How do you manage to live a life full, fulfilled, happy, impactful? A life that has contributed so much so that when you're sitting back at your deathbed or maybe in the twilight of the years, you know for sure that, listen, I did this. I got this. I am so happy that I was faithful, that I was focused, that I did that which I was sent to do. How do you come to that level where you're so content that you are welcoming the transition of life into the next dispensation? It is going to be as a result of how you lived. That's what I want to conclude in this podcast today because we've been discussing how to die well. How can we say it is finished together with Jesus Christ who said when he was hanging on that cross, one of his last words was, It is finished. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. We have been invariably taught that the formulas to succeed in life are easy. It is not a complicated thing. It is not rocket science to be successful. That's why, I mean, anyone who is born of a woman is called to be successful. Whether you've got a degree or a master's or a certificate or none of it. If you look at the people who are successful in life across the board, most of them, in fact, all of them, you'll find that they are tapestry. I mean, not all of them have papers, academic papers. Some of them are people who were illiterate. But that doesn't mean that they were stupid or foolish. They were successful. That means that if we wanted to be successful in life, the formulas are easy to apply. And that's why I've been discussing in these episodes, and I'm coming to a close today. We've been discussing how to exit this world well on a high note, and how to die well. And we looked at very many examples, and one of the examples that we saw is Jesus Christ, who said at the end of the day, when he was hanging on the cross, one of his last words was, it is finished. What was finished? His mission was finished. And we can leave in such a way that we can say together with him at the end of our day, it is finished. And this one is open for everyone. You don't need to have a, some kind of special academic papers to be able to do this. This is basically life. And the principles are the ones that I'm curating today and I'm sharing with you. The first thing, if you're going to live such a high octane life, To such an extent that when you come to the end of it, you are happy, you're fulfilled, and you're saying it is finished. Number one, you need to know what your assignment in life is. It doesn't take an academician to find out what the assignment in life is. Why? Because your assignment in life is in your heart. It is in your spirit. You feel it. You walk with it. It is not out there in some high-tower institution. It is in your heart. Uh, Miles Monroe told us that God hid your purpose well enough so that you can know where to find it. You will never miss it which is inside of you. That is where it is. If you're going to say it is finished together with Jesus Christ, you will need to, number one, know your assignment. And then number two, very much important, just like Jesus Christ, you will need to be prepared for this assignment. You hear about Jesus Christ being born, 
and you talk about him going at church at 12 years of age and then from then on it is all quiet nothing basically like a seed that has been dropped into the ground you don't know what's going in there nothing obscurity darkness but that is a moment of preparation the problem with people is that they're always looking for prominence i mean you, you come to town and you want everyone else to know that you are in town Take some time, cool down, study the atmosphere, prepare yourself for your assignment, get ready for it. Sharpen yourself like Arkovi said, sharpen the soul, sharpen your soul so that when your moment comes, and I'm going to talk about that shortly, when your moment comes, you are ready. Your moment will always come. The question is, are you going to even recognize it? You will only recognize your moment when you've been preparing for it. Very many people lose the essence of their lives, lose their timing because they have never been preparing themselves. They are waiting all the time when they are supposed to have been preparing. So number two, you are supposed to prepare yourself for your assignment so that when the moment comes, you are able to seize that particular moment and run with it. The third thing that you need to do, in order to say together with Jesus Christ that it is finished, number three, you have to make sure that you are not distracted once your hands are on the plow, once you are in your assignment, once you are doing that which you are called. I mean, you've been preparing yourself for all these years, but now you've realized that, hey, wait a minute, I am a customer service representative and my life is geared towards that career or that calling for the rest of it. You will not be distracted. If anything, you double in, you become the absolute best in that thing. And listen to me carefully, you will always be distracted. There are things that we call shiny objects. A job comes here and you know you need to reevaluate. Should I go for it or should I not? Should I stay in my assignment or should I not stay in my assignment? So the time I was in the middle of something that I was doing and then a job offer came for me to go to West Africa and I went. And my wife has told me several times that you were distracted by taking that job offer. And I'm still arguing about that and so on and so forth. But the point is that you will always have distractions. How do you say no to those distractions? Jesus Christ said, get behind me, Satan. He was calling his own disciple a devil because he was distracting him or dissuading him from pursuing his assignment. That's how we got to be militant with our assignments so that we are not distracted from them. And then number four, you need to have the knowledge of your timing. Timing is absolutely important. When are you supposed to ascend the platform? Not every day. There is a particular timing, a particular season. Only if you have been preparing yourself the days that have gone. Number five, if you're going to die well, you will need to know who is your audience. Whom were you sent to deliver? You are a sent out one. Your life is a mission. This mission is a deliverance mission. Either you're delivering people, you're adding value to people, you're creating things, you're contributing, you're impacting. But to whom? That is the question you need to answer. And very many people do not answer this question. And I'm, I'm telling you, one of the biggest problems we have with the academic systems is that this question is seldom answered. In fact, if anything, everyone is always going to be treated the same. Maybe just being directed towards the same goal. And yet, inside of us, we are wired differently to respond differently to different calls and different pains and different types of people or different types of situation. It might not necessarily be people. It might be animals, it might be the environment, it might be governance, it might be whatever it is. But know who it is that is your audience if you're going to die well and focus on them. Like we said in the pre previous episode, one kick 10,000 times. The problem in our generation is that we're practicing 10,000 kicks once. And so we become masters of none but you know, mediocre in everything. But if you know whom you've been sent to, you will become laser sharp focused and you can be able to deliver. And at the end of the day, you can easily say it is finished because you know when it is finished. 
Finally, finally, if you're going to say together with Jesus Christ, it is finished. Number five, you will need, number six, you will need to know who your villain is. You know who a villain is? The villain is the Goliath that David had. The villain is the devil that Jesus Christ had. The villain is the British Empire that William Wallace had. The villain is Sunny Abacha, General Sunny Abacha that Ken Sarawiwa in Nigeria had. And I can go on and on and on and on. For me, the villain is the status quo. The villain for education could be ignorance and so on and so forth. But who is your villain? Whom are you fighting against? Who it is that is perpetuating things that you do not want to be seen in the lives of your chosen audience? Who it is? Who is it? What is it that you're fighting up against? Don't tell me that you're a, you're a man of peace. You will always be against something. As long as you're a man or a woman on mission, you will always be against something. There is no mission worth pursuing that doesn't have a villain. Every mission worth pursuing has a villain. If you're Coca-Cola, your villain is thirst. Don't, not Pepsi. <laughs> if you are Nike, your villain is... Fill the blank. My point is simple. If you're Apple, you have a villain. If you're Microsoft, you have a villain. And the villain, the biggest mistake people normally make is to think that their competitor is the villain. No! Your competitor is not a villain. In fact, your competitor should be a collaborator. The villain is the thing that you are up against. It is the thing that the solution you're providing is up against. Who is that villain? Who is it? Who is it? Find out who that villain is. And most impo importantly, Jesus Christ knew who his villain was. See, that thing should also apply to us. We have not been anointed to deliver everyone. Same thing, not everyone is our villain. There are some battles that are not worth fighting. There are some battles that are not mine. The problem with people, you find them fighting where they have never been meant to fight. They have never been called to fight. But they are wasting their valuable quality time fighting battles that never were belonging to them in the first place. I can use a cheap example of social media. You find people arguing on other people's walls over something that someone is so passionate about. Huh? You post something on your social media that you're so passionate about and someone comes and wants to oppose you, yet you experience what you just shared. Fighting battles that are not supposed to be yours is one of the biggest problems for a visionary. And when you can do this, you get distracted and you cannot finish your assignment when you are fighting all the villains. You are not God. You are not Jesus Christ who is fighting all kinds of battles. You have one villain. And by the way, one of those villains is the man staring at you in the mirror. But there's another villain that I know. When you're smack in the middle of your assignment, you know there's a particular villain that you're supposed to fight. Find out who that villain is and go after them. Laser sharp. Go after them with as much fury as you can get. Once you do these things, it is easy for you at the end of the day to say it is finished. Three most powerful words ever spoken by a man who was dying. We too can speak the same. Only if we do these six things I've mentioned. And these six things I've mentioned, they don't need you to have a rocket science brain. They don't need to have some kind of academic intellectual whatever. As long as you are a human being, you have an assignment follow through and at the end of the day you will be able to say it is finished i come to the close of this mini series and probably i'm going to continue talking about matters related to death and martyrdom and all those things in the next episodes but until then think about these things and all the best bye bye
A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.